Hi guys, it's me Samantha here today and we are going to be doing a first impressions with the new Melt Cosmetics Amor y Mariposa palette. I didn't get the entire collection because homegirl ain't balling like that, but I did get the palette and I also picked up the mirror because really the mirrors that I use are from the Dollar Tree and they're fine. Like I don't need a fancy one, but I always kind of wanted one of these really nice ones. So I figured I'd pick this up and I did take advantage of the Black Friday sale that they started. I wanted to get the palette beforehand, but then I just kept telling myself I didn't need it. And then finally I convinced myself that I did. Part of the reason that I was so drawn to this collection really was the design of the packaging. This is the cardboard stock that the palette came in, but this design here that reminds me so much of the Sacred Heart reminds me so much of my grandmother. She loved the Sacred Heart and when she passed away it just became something that was very close to me because it reminded me of her. And I kept telling myself that's not a reason to buy the palette, but I gave in. Um, this is not my first Melt Cosmetic palette. I have used the Smoke Sessions palette. And I feel like Melt Cosmetics gets a lot of mixed reviews. Some people absolutely love their palettes. Some don't really care for it. But I just kind of been very picky about what I buy from them. So that's the only palette that I've really purchased. Um, but when I purchased this, I did buy the 27 because that's something I've been curious about for a while. The picture on this itself too, I just think it's so beautiful because it also looks like the Sacred Heart and instead of thorns, they used hummingbirds, which I think was just so gorgeous and the butterflies kind of you know butterflies symbolize rebirth so I just think it's it's beautiful and I don't know if you know because I try not to watch any videos about this palette beforehand so I'm not very familiar as to why but I would assume this little puppy here is somebody's love who's probably not here anymore so I did lose a dog last Christmas so we're coming up on the one year anniversary and I just thought that was really cute the inside of the palette has 20 shades and this is what it looks like the inside is just as beautiful let me do it this way this is what the inside of the mirror looks like as well it's really really gorgeous the pans are kind of small which is surprising to me they kind of remind me of ColourPop shadows the smaller like like the 9 p.m palettes um but I could tell that they put a lot into the packaging of the palette. Like even the back has this beautiful detail on it. So I think it is really, really gorgeous. And I'm excited to play with this. If you are new to my channel, my name is Samantha. I probably should have done this earlier. <laughs> I do a lot of first impressions. Um, and I'm starting to work on some project panning. If you're interested in any of that type of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you can come back and see more videos with me. So let's get into the swatches. I'm going to ask for people to kind of forgive me on my pronunciation and stuff because I'm a bad Puerto Rican. And I can tell that a lot of these names, you know, obviously I'm a New England Puerto Rican. So our slang is going to be very different than any kind of um, Mexican, Californian person, but there are going to be similarities. So some words I'm familiar with and some I'm just not. Also, my Spanish is not great. So there is that. I don't have anything on my skin, no primer or anything like that. I never do that when I swatch because I just want to see how it's going to look just on face value. I'm really sad to swatch these shadows because of the little um, butterfly imprints, but we're going to do it anyway. We'll start with the bottom row. So we're going to go, we'll go this way. So the first one I'm going to swatch is Charro, which is probably somebody's name, but I could be wrong. It's like a plummy, dark plum. Then we have like a violet shade called Nube or Nubi. It means cloud. I don't know if there's any significance in Mexican culture that it means something else. 
almohana, almohada. So technically that means pillow, but I believe they, and I, I don't know. In Puerto Rican Spanish, we say amor, like love. So I would imagine that that has something to do with like my love or giving love or showing love. The next one is a shimmer shade called Sangrado, which like sangre means blood. So maybe like blood, like family. And then Perla, I don't know what that is, if I'm being totally honest. So far they're swatching lovely, like I'm really excited about the shades. Now we're going to go into this, the third row, Maria. That wasn't skipping the shadow, my finger skipped. So. Wow, looking at myself in the monitor, I've lost a lot of color already this year, this, like this time of year. The next one is Mariposa, which is Butterfly. Beautiful. Then we have this coral color called Abuelita, which is like Grandmother. This red is Abrazos, which is like Hug, I think. And then... This last, this last burgundy is Nueva Vida, like new life, which is what, you know, a butterfly symbolizes a new life, rebirth. I love butterflies for that. I was a big fan of butterflies my whole life as well, partly because Mariah Carey, but also just because I'm a girly girl when I was a kid. I had butterflies in my room and all that. So then we're getting to the second row. I'm just going to show it to you again to remind you what it looks like. So we did this row and then we did this one. So we're going into this one, which is like the neutral row. And the first shade is kind of like a mustardy yellow called Mensaje, which is message. Then we have a champagne, which is tequila very metallic then we have like a taupe a true taupe which is te adoro I adore you then senales which is I don't know if there's like a slang to that in Mexico it's like pretty much my skin tone so you're really not going to see anything it is there I promise you <laughs> um, it means signs I don't know if that has they have a slang for that in California, but it could be like a superstition thing because like a lot of Latinos were very superstitious people. So I don't know if that referenced that at all, but I, that would be my guess. Um, we're going to start swatching over here just to not have to wash everything off yet. Then the next one is Mesquite. Now we're in the top row and the first one is the shimmer green, the lighter one, and it's called Sileto Lindo. I know there's like a famous singer of that, but I mean, they're too young to be referencing that. I don't know if there's some other cultural thing in California or in Mexico. The next one is like a mint shade called Cariño, which is like, like your heart. Like, you would say it like as a term of endearment to somebody like my love the next one is like a really arm like camo army green and it's called sentimentos which is sentimentos <laughs> sentiment then we're gonna have michucana which i think is a place and probably I would guess in Mexico and the last one I'm not familiar with and feel free to educate me is Guamuchi I 
and that one's pretty too. All right, so we have all the shadows swatched out. I hope you can see. There I am. Here we go. It's a really balanced palette between the greens and the warmer, like, berry tones. I'm really excited to play with this and have it be part of my collection. I'm going to try to wipe these out. Another thing I know from the uh, Smoke Sessions palette is like their shadows are very, very pigmented. So I'm going to have to, and I can tell by the swatches, they're very pigmented. We're going to have to do our eyes first. So that's why I don't have any base makeup on. And I put my Milani eyeshadow primer on and we're going to do our eyes first because um, just in case there's any fallout, because I know these shadows are probably going to be pigmented if they're anything like the Smoke Sessions, um, shadows. So, I really wanted to stay away from the green eyeshadow look, because even though I haven't seen any videos with this palette, I've seen a lot of, uh, photos with this palette, and there was a lot of green looks, but part of me still really wants to try out the green, so we're, we're going to just do it anyway. Um... So I have this fluffy brush. It looks ginormous, but I promise you, like, when you compare it to, like, other fluffy brushes, it's really not that big. But we're going to go into Sentimentos. I can never say that properly. It's the shade here. And I love looking at other people's palettes that are all used, but... If I'm being honest, it makes me sad when my, <laughs> when I use my shadows and they looked, look very used, so I have to get over that. I go very, like, softly into my palettes for that reason, because I'm like, oh no, if there's any fallout, I try to, like, pick up just the fallout. I mean, it's very pigmented and easy to blend. Like, I put it down... And it's moving around, but it's not, like, disappearing. And that's what I I like, because I'm not an expert. And I want makeup to be fun. And if you're spending a year blending out your shadow, you're not going to have fun. I'm going to go into Sinales with the same brush, because... I don't care and I'm gonna just take it above the that green just to uh, blend it into my skin I know I need to do my eyebrows but when is a girl supposed to find time you know so with this smaller fluffy brush I'm gonna go into the dark green and you can see I'm getting some fallout with that shade I feel like with pigment shadows like this, the darker shades always give you some fallout. So I anticipated that right there. It's okay. We'll just clean it up when we do our face. I'm going to do like a halo eye, I think. So I'm just going to bring that darker green on the inside as well. And I'm going to go a little bit up. I do want to try another color and get it even darker. So I'm going to go into Charo, which is like a deep plum. I don't know how it's going to blend. Hopefully it doesn't get muddy. But I want to try it. I think it looks good. I expect it to kind of turn brown. You know, because green and purple. But it actually is holding a lot of the purple, surprisingly. I'm not mad at it, though. I think that looks pretty good. So at this point, you could go in with a glitter glue, which I'm probably going to do. You can put in concealer and stuff as well um, to clean it up. I don't like putting concealer on my lid because my eyelids are very 
oily anyway and so it'll just crease more with my hooded eyes so we're just gonna go in with a little bit of glitter glue so I put the glitter glue on a brush from the back of my hand and then from there I apply it where I want All right, and so now we're going to go into this shade, which is um, Michoacan, and put that in the center. And then I'm going to go on my finger to And I'm going to kind of blend with my finger the edges. So I'm going to just take a little makeup wipe and clean the under part. I'm not going to be very precise and create like a winged effect because I do kind of want it to be rounded. And then I'm going to take this pencil brush and I'm going to go into tequila which is like the champagne shade. Put that in my inner corner. And then I'm going to go into Quileto Lindo, which is the lighter green, and go over top. Because I really just want the green, but I want it to appear very bright. So sometimes when you put a gold or a yellow underneath and makes it more champagne -y, like more of a minty so this is the first look we're gonna work on the other side and see what we think for this one I want to do something a little bit more red I don't think I have done a red look on my channel or at least not for a very long time so we're gonna go into the reds just to make blending easier off the jump I'm gonna go into the adoro I think that's the shade I'm holding it upside down and away from me so <laughs> just guessing I would like to also note that I have a little dry patch here even with the um, shadow primer so if there's any kind of issues blending there then it, it's likely not the shadow it's going to likely be my face so <laughs> I don't really expect this to show too much because it's very close to my skin tone I just when I go in with the red I don't want it to be so severe So now we're going to go in with the red shade, which is called Abrazos. It's a beautiful, beautiful red. I'm trying to kind of keep my eye looking this way so I can get into the crease there because with the fold of my eye, sometimes that can be difficult. I'm getting a little bit of fallout with this shade, but with as much as I'm applying, I'm really surprised I'm not getting more, and it looks super pretty. I'm enjoying applying this very much. And that's like a freaking true red. <laughs> so pretty. All right, now we're going to go into Nueva Vida, New Life, which is the darker shade right next to it. And just deepen out this outer V. And I'm going to stay closer to the inside of the crease with this shade. They're not fooling around with the reds, that's for sure. I could make this like a very berry look and go into this. But I really want to go into this gold, which is called Mesquite. 
and I don't have any glitter glue underneath or any. I'm just using the warmth of my finger to apply it. I'm actually going to go into that berry shade, Sagrado, and just use that to kind of blend a little bit here. And then I'll go back into Nueva Vida and, and um, deepen the outer V. Just, just go back in just so it can be more blended, really. And we're going to go into Tequila for the inner corner. All right, I cleaned up the under eye a little bit. We're going to put on the rest of our face and then come back and tell you what I think. Okay, so these are the final looks, and I think they look really, really pretty. I'm really happy about this one because brands always talk about purple eyeshadows, how they're hard to formulate, they're difficult to blend, blah, 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 all these things. And not only did that shade, Chato, this one right here, like layer onto a green quite nicely it held its own I expected it to turn kind of brown and I was okay with that but it actually still looks very purple and I'm really surprised by that I match my bottom lash line to my upper lid and I just brought the red down into my lower lash line on this side and I can't even believe how well these performed. Um, not that I was expecting the absolute worst, but I just feel like people complain about their inconsistency all the time. And this is my second palette from them that I actually really love. I love my Smoke Sessions palette, Smoke Sessions palette and I love this palette. And again, all of the designs on it, it just puts... It's just a very special palette to my heart in a way because of the packaging. I know like it's not personal to me, but it, it gives me a very sentimental feeling. So yeah, I really, really like this palette. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's fine too. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And until next time, love you guys. Bye.